Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this channel is all about my journey throughout CRNA school. So today's video is going to actually be another non-CRNA related video. It's going to be how I built my IKEA Millsbow greenhouse, which is going to be a plant terrarium cabinet as well. If you guys are interested, let's get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> I'll spare you the gory details of building the cabinet, building the IKEA cabinet based on the specs and, and how it is in the instructions I feel like is redundant and I didn't need to film that part of the video. And after I put it all together where I put the, the glass in place, I siliconed all the edges and I put a glass in front so that I could make it like a little tank. And what I'm going to do is now go into the clips of what I did to make this cabinet what it is now and you'll see what it is at the end of this video. Um, I'm going to go into detail on what worked and what didn't and what changes I had to make in order to make it work. So just bear with me. Uh, this is going to be a long video. So first, I drilled a hole. Then after I drilled the hole, um, I wanted to paint the sides because I, I learned from Harley G. Um, she did the, the sides painted and it was more of like that immersive experience. I didn't want you to be able to see the spray foam from inside the glass. So I sprayed the outside um, and uh, made sure that, you know, you couldn't see inside from the sides. And we did two coats of black spray paint. Then I put a conduit here to put the waterfall tubing. So in case, um, like I needed to carve things that it would protect the waterfall tubing because I didn't want it to leak from behind the foam. And I also thought if I need to change it out for any reason, if there's clogs or whatnot, I'd rather be able to pull it out and thread it back in. So I put a conduit behind um, the spray foam. So now you'll see we're spray foaming the crap out of this back portion. And unfortunately you have to lay it down and spray wherever you're gonna like work on. Like you can't spray the sides when they're not lying flat on that particular side cause it'll just fall off. So it took a long time. It was a long process. You have to wait for the foam to expand and to cure before you could do anything. So this was a long, long, long process. So I'm speeding it up for your benefit. These are cans of great stuff, the expandable foam things that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's for like four or five bucks. Um, I bought a crap ton of them. Initially I bought 12 and I think I had to go buy at least six more. So yeah, this great stuff really doesn't last much, but I wasn't about to buy like industrial spray foam just for this silly little project. So then I laid some pots, kind of like the side ones that are nursery pots are so that I could put plants in and then the clear ones that you can barely see, um, it's going to be like how the waterfall is going to trail down. Um, so then it's going to like fill each cup and then like kind of trickle down like that. That's what I thought in my head. I really wish I would have planned this out better because um, I really had to make do with what I did initially. I, I, you know, the spray foam in my head was like, this is gonna cure and I need to do this fast. So I really should have probably laid out the cups ahead of time uh, so that I can see, you know, what's their trajectory for the water that's gonna go that way. Maybe with some hot glue on the glass and just watch it from there. But I kind of was just going with it and that's where I made my first mistake. Another thing is that I wish I would have made these pots straight instead of angular. I wanted to make um, kind of like little uh, rifts I guess or like something on the side of a mountain so that it didn't look so um, not natural. So that's why I added the angles but really now that I have the plants in there I wish they were just straight up and down.
once that side cured, I decided to do um, one of the other sides and I laid another conduit for the cables for the fan. Um, in case the fans decide to die or for whatever reason, since there's going to be a lot of moisture in there, if they just like short or whatnot, I can easily change them out by pulling the, the, the cable out from the conduit. I don't have to worry about having to cut uh, you know, another hole back in and then spray foaming it back when I put a new one in if I had to rip the other one out. Now I flipped it over to do the other side. Each one I had to wait a whole day. So these are like, you know, next day, next day, that type of thing. That's why I'm telling you it, it took a long time. In retrospect, I wish I would have just built the cabinets similar to the ones I already have, um, but that just wasn't the vision I was going for. Um, I got this idea from Harley G. She posted a video of her uh, plant terrarium cabinet and also uh, Wolfgang's Mama, another YouTuber, and Benji Plant. Um, Benji Plant and Wolfgang's Mama used um, the IKEA Rudsta cabinet, um, but I'm using the Mills Bowl, so I based it more on Harley G's example. So this is all the spray foam all done. So now I'm gonna start making um, housing for the water pump, the waterfall pump. <coughs> I didn't want any like debris or any of the moss or anything like that that to fall into the water and then for the water pump the waterfall pump to suck it up so I wanted to make a housing so that I could put a filter in the front um, the way that I made the filter was just using kind of like um, a drywall mesh and um, just a sponge so the drywall mesh and the sponge would kind of absorb any particles of different sizes so that it wouldn't pull it into the waterfall pump just so it doesn't mess it up over time. So here what I was also doing was kind of just trial and error. I wasn't sure how to do it. I had watched several videos um, from this other YouTuber. Oh darn, I forgot now. He does mostly, um, you know, hardscapes in um, fish tanks and stuff, different types of designs and uh, like ASM, ASMR style so I just kind of went by some similar housing to what he had and um, just siliconed it in but here I'm just trying to make like the actual housing of the waterfall pump based on the size of the waterfall pump and then I was just going to cut around from there and like glue around from there I just needed to get started because I felt like I was delaying the inevitable like I needed to get this done I wasn't sure how to do it, so I kept putting it off. Um, you know, all the while I'm waiting for the spray foam to dry and expand and all that, and then I have to carve it. So I'm telling you, this process took a long time. I'm, like I said, I'm in CRNA school, so I didn't do it consecutively. I did it on weekends, so this took me several months to do. Like I, I, I think my, um, I think I started maybe in February, but I finished it only recently. So this is me trialing it out in the little fish tank. I got a two and a half gallon fish tank thinking that that would suffice. You'll see later in the video that it does not. Um, so there's the waterfall pump there and I'm just kind of, kind of just figuring it out as I go. Um, what I decided was to use the glass as like a barrier. So I only had to do like a three quarter type of doohickey. So that's what I did but then I ended up having to take this tank out and using a different tank so I had to change the housing anyway but anyways I'm just showing you more or less how it is to build housing uh, to put a filter for a waterfall pump in my situation so here I'm just cutting the hole for the tubing uh, so that it can connect to the pump because I have the tubing already laid into the cabinet
So here now I'm building the filter to go in front. This is the drywall patch. I'm using it as the screen. That's it all complete. And now I'll show you how it looks in the tank. And then I sealed it in with some silicone. So here I'm carving out what I want the waterfall to flow like, um, like to go from cup to cup. Um, unfortunately, it was like trial and error every single time because I feel like the pump puts out a certain amount of water every single time. It's not exact. Um, so no matter how much I tried, it still wasn't working. I decided to come up with this idea to use some plexiglass that I had already, uh, like this acrylic plastic that I had. Uh, to make little ramps to go from cup to cup and I'll show you now in this next clip how they look That way the water will flow precisely where I want it to because it was kind of doing whatever I wanted Now I'm putting um, some cocoa fiber, cocoa core. Yeah, I think it's cocoa core. The, the ones that you that you get in a brick and it expands. Uh, laid down some silicone on the foam and then pressed in the dirt. Well, it's not dirt, it's cocoa core. <laughs> um, so I just kind of eyeballed where I saw silicone and pressed it in. This is after I lifted it just to show what didn't stick, but that's okay because I'm gonna lay moss on top of it. Um, it wasn't going to stay like in really big chunks. It was just like a thin layer of cocoa core just to cover that uh, foam. I didn't like the color of the foam. And I wasn't sure if the moss was going to be completely like covering everything. And I also wanted to spray paint the cups because I didn't like that I used clear cups. Um, I might have decided it would <laughs> it probably would have been better just to use a dark cup. And then the plastic ramps, you could still see the foam underneath. So I was like, I'm just going to put black in this little like waterfall creek, I guess, the, where it kind of digs into the mountain, if you, if you will. Um, I'm sorry for the filming on this. I was filming with this hand while also trying to shake the spray bottle because it was almost out of paint. So that's why it looks like I'm literally having epileptic seizures as I'm filming this. I apologize. Then I found some sheet moss at a local nursery and I thought this was brilliant. I put it um, wherever I wanted and then I laid it in with some uh, hobby wire that I folded into like a little pin. And I thought this was genius, but it wasn't in the end. This is the um, weather stripping I put uh, before I put the doors in, just to make sure that it had a nice good seal. Then I decided to do like a false bottom layer. I laid some LECA on the bottom, put a substrate barrier. Before I put the LECA, I put a pond liner um, just because I didn't want any leaks because, you know, I drilled the hole on the bottom where I was going to run the cables for the lights and the fans. Um, this was a big problem. So the pond liner didn't go all the way up to the substrate background and it didn't go all the way up on the glass. So any little... Uh, trickling from the waterfall would trickle into the dirt and I thought that was okay because I'm gonna have plants in there so that way it'll have some sort of watering but then I added a sprinkler system so then it was just it was just too much water accumulating and I didn't really account for it to be so much and it ended up becoming like a pool of water in the bottom um, I noticed that there was a big leak because um, it must have gone above the pond liner so this is where problems start to arise. But my idea was to have the false bottom, a substrate layer, a substrate, sorry, substrate barrier, and then a substrate where I did the coca core with some charcoal and some um, sphagnum moss. And you see there on the sides too, I put some sphagnum moss, that, not live sphagnum moss on the sides. And then I have the live one on the backing. But because I was having so many issues and because I wasn't 
um, consistent on doing it every day, like I was only able to do this on the weekends, um, it started to die. So then because it started to die and like the, I don't know, the moisture in there, it started to get mold. I didn't have any uh, beneficial bugs in there to eat the mold. So I ended up actually removing all of the live moss and putting just the dried moss all in the background. Um, you'll see that at the end and I'm much happier about it because there was a lot of mold um, when I used the live moss. No matter how much I sprayed with fungicide, nothing, nothing would pick that up. Okay, so here's the problem. So I ended up cutting out the entire bottom layer and I put a bigger fish tank. So I'll show you what it is. Unfortunately, I was so frustrated with this process that I didn't end up... Um, filming it. I just kind of took pictures as I went along the way because I was crying. I was crying. This had been already months in the process and I just kept having hiccup after hiccup after hiccup after hiccup. Um, so what I did was I cut I cut out the entire bottom like as, as high as the new fish tank was going to be. This new fish tank fit almost exactly just like an extra on one side and I figured that was perfect because that's where I had the hole for the cables so then I was just going to spray foam it all in and make it all sealed. Um, I'm still having issues with it, but it looks nice. So here it is, I cut it out, put the new bigger tank and foamed it in. You see, I'm foaming it in. There's my um, housing for the waterfall pump. That's how it looks when it's closed. I started to carve back what grew because it grew a lot. And then um, I noticed that it decided to creep out the back. <laughs> The spray foam, I guess, had nowhere to go, so it expanded backwards. Thankfully, the glass didn't crack, but it definitely doesn't seal now in the back. So there's that. And because I was so frustrated, I just carved the excess and pretended I didn't see it. So then I didn't like the way the fish tank looked with the white spray foam, so I put that in the background of the fish tank, and it looks a lot better. And I also painted the foam black, and I made it look like it was rocks, so to speak. And yeah, then I added the lights. I put silicone on the edges, like where the shelves would go, like right there. And I put the wires and connected each one to each other. That's the top one. I used just magnetic hooks for that. Then I did this one as well. I just put the silicone uh, uh, dollop right there by the shelf and right there. And then here, this is my sprinkler system. It's kind of hard to see with the lights. Um, but they're all part of the RepTiZoo um, system. And it just so happens the cabinet has its own holes that are there already. So I just use those, those existing holes and the tubing fits perfectly in them. So there you go, you see it right all along the front. And I have it on a timer. Um, it's back here, this is a tubing, it goes up, divides and goes into each individual hole. I have it set to go four minutes once a day, every day. And those are my fans. I wish I had more, but that's that. This is what it looks like. Um, the humidity is like 99% all the time. So the water accumulates on the glass and that's where I'm having leaks because it's just dripping toward the bottom from the glass. So I don't know what to do about it, but this is the finished product.
So yeah, I hope you liked my process on how I built my plant terrarium. Um, I am really happy with the way it looks. My plants are actually doing really well now that it's all established and everything is pretty much consistent. I don't open the doors as often as um, I should just so that I can look at everything and check everything out. Um, every now and then I'll spray it myself just to make sure there's no areas that aren't getting hit by the sprinkler system. Um, but for the most part, everything stays like at a nice damp state, not soaked or soggy. Um, so I like, I like the setup that I have for it now. I am planning on adding more plants. I just don't want it to be overgrown so quickly. And, um, I just kind of want to see how it goes for a while. I've been using it now, I think for a month or two where I've been absolutely completely done with it. Um, so that's why I'm giving you this video now just because I was waiting to see if any more problems would arise um, The only issue that I'm having right now is the accumulation of water on the glass So I'm not sure how I'm gonna combat that. I'm thinking of adding like one of those um, Those things that you add on like a car mirror to prevent the water like from the rain accumulating but I still haven't figured that out um, or just <laughs> kind of leaving cups on the side of the doors so that whatever accumulates on the glass just drips into a cup. That's how I have it right now. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys liked my video. I hope you uh, got inspiration from my cabinet to build yours. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help. And I'll link all the products that I used in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.